Yeah, we should start. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. So now, so now we are uh, in our next session that is pedagogy and technology in uh, college education during the time of pandemic. Uh, this session will be chaired by uh, Baba Sharma, and uh, we have three speakers. I hand over to Baba Sharma Sharma. Yeah. Good afternoon. Uh, so this is going to be a panel discussion uh, titled Pedagogy and Technology in College Education During the Pandemic. Uh, so we have <coughs> this session will be of duration one and a half hours. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, pandemic has brought unprecedented situation to the world during last almost two years. So it has created innumerable challenges in particular to education and teaching learning process. Particularly, the education in elementary and secondary levels suffered a lot because their physical environment facilitating teacher-student interactions and peer learning is crucial. However, the UG and PG level teaching learning has also a lot of challenges, difficulties. Uh, so the challenges, the higher education faced during this pandemic were also not less demanding. Thanks to the technological developments in last two decades, the teaching learning have been taking place in a completely new platform for last almost two years. So in this session, we are going to discuss some experiences and experimentations in teaching learning in higher levels, that is UG and PG levels. Uh, we are also going to see some experiences in use of technology in effective learning and evaluation in online mode. Of course, we are not taking up uh, the, the technology in, in a specific something like GeoGebra or uh, says math, these are of course tools to do things in mathematics, but we are essentially concentrating on the mode of teaching learning okay, on uh, online platform. So we'll have uh, three speakers in this. So Gita Vangat Raman, uh, she is from the Kabir Ambedkar University, Delhi. She will talk on teaching mathematics. So title is teaching mathematics experience during COVID times. We have Dr. D. Sukumar, IIT Hyderabad. He will speak on effective methodology in online classroom and use of tech, uh, online resources for students learning. And we'll be having Dr. A. Chandrasekharan, uh, Central University of Tamil Nadu. He will speak on use of technology in effective learning and assessment on online play. Forms. So what uh, I'm suggesting that we'll be having, so three panelists will speak, uh, say for about 20 minutes each, uh, I mean, at most 20 minutes, and then leaving us say, ar around uh, 30 minutes or so for interactions. So in the, so when uh, the respective panelists speak, so kindly you, you can spell out your uh, specific questions you, if you have or if you want to make some points, okay? So that will take up only after all panelists, uh, they speak, okay? So we'll take, take them up uh, one by one later. So the first speaker is uh, Dr. Gita Venkatraman. So she is a professor in the School of Liberal Studies and Dean of Research and Consultancy in BR, Dr. B.R. Ambedkar University, Delhi. So Gita did her DPhil at University of Oxford. She, te uh, she taught in St. Stephen's College, Delhi University from 1993 to 2010 before joining the Ambedkar University. So she has vast experience in teaching, research, academic administration, and outreach activities. And she has written uh, at least three books, as I know. So let me abstain from taking time to speak uh, the details of her contributions and activities. It will take quite a bit of time, though I'm very tempted to. 
Uh, so let us give her more time to speak. So she'll speak on, as I said, teaching mathematics experiences during COVID times. So thank you, Gita, for your participation in this panel discussion. So over to you, Gita. Uh, thank you so much, Bhava, and uh, thanks for asking me to do this. Uh, uh, one thing I wanted to say is that as teachers, uh, we talk a lot and we don't know when to stop. So please uh, let me know when my time is uh, getting close to getting over. Even though I promised you that I would finish earlier, I think once uh, one starts talking, I mean, there's no guarantee. <laughs> so um, I just wanted to, I mean, welcome everybody. I think we had a very nice uh, session earlier also on uh, voices from school teachers. And as uh, Baba had mentioned, I think the entire system, whether it is the school level or college level or even research, everybody got affected uh, because of the pandemic and not just in terms of the, uh, you know, the way we conduct our teaching and learning, but uh, the kind of uh, uh, mental health issues which have emerged during this period, not just for uh, uh, I mean, for everyone, faculty as well as students and so on. So what I'm going to talk about today are the experiences that I have undergone myself during this, uh, uh, this pandemic and, um, you know, in terms of the teaching and learning and also what I have gleaned from other uh, teachers who have spoken to me about their, uh, uh, you know, what they have experienced and so on. So I will kind of take it in a slightly chronological way and, uh, you know, discuss about what happened when the pandemic started and uh, we went into a kind of immediate lockdown and we reopened for uh, only online classes. And at that point, uh, in a way, none of us were equipped to, to handle uh, things. Um, so in my own university, it's a state-funded uh, university, and we have an undergraduate program in mathematics, and we have a research program in mathematics. We don't have a master's level uh, in mathematics. We instead have MPhil and PhD. So uh, as soon as the pandemic happened and, uh, you know, we had decided to go, uh, I mean, we were, I think for about 10 or 15 days, everything was shut, and no one knew what was going to happen next. But then uh, because we are a small university, it was uh, you know, easier for us to take administrative decisions as well. So there were meetings and we decided that we would start online because our session was to end by June. And we really didn't want to prolong uh, the teaching learning of that semester beyond that. I, at that time, um, luckily, were, I was only teaching an MPhil elective class. So I had something like six students that I had to teach. And we were soon entering into a period where we were finishing, we had to finish the syllabus and start the assessment. Now, the MPhil classes that I had used to happen in a, the students would lecture. So they would lecture to everybody and then we would all you know have discussions and so on and given the uh, fact that everybody was caught unawares by the uh, this thing the first decision i took at that point was to uh, make it a flipped classroom so i don't know how many of you are uh, familiar with this idea of a flipped classroom where uh, the material that the student reads is assigned to them beforehand they read it and then they come into the classroom and it's essentially a discussion that is taking place. So uh, because they were MPhil students and I had a small number of them, it was fairly easy to switch into a flipped classroom mode. So we had clear uh, readings for you know, each class. The students read it and then they came and they mentioned where they had doubts, what they couldn't understand and so on. And here I was, uh, I didn't have anything, any way of answering their questions directly. I did not have a tab at that time. I did not have a facility where I could write on a screen and project. So uh, you can guess what I did. And I'll show you what I did. I wrote on a piece of paper like this, and I just sort of uh, showed them uh, at the camera, you know, see what I've 
written and can you follow and my finger was going like this without uh, knowing exactly what i was pointing to so that was the uh, the initial uh, you know start of uh, what happened in the uh, this thing and my colleagues who were teaching undergraduates of course they had a tougher time because the classes were larger and uh, i don't know i mean many of you who have taught undergraduates uh, know that it's a very uh, tricky thing teaching them and keeping their attention they've also come into college uh, after school college is seen as this period where you know you have a lot of freedom and particularly if there is no attendance requirement it's taken as you know okay we are free to do what we want sort of thing so i think my colleagues particularly had a tough time but they did a mix of things so they uh, used uh, latex to make beamer slides uh, showed that to the students to you know take them through the teaching i mean teaching of a topic they also some of them made handwritten notes uh, those were shared and you know somehow i think in june we just about managed to uh, finish all the teaching we gave assessments whatever were left uh, which were i think mainly multiple choice kind of assessments were done um, uh, and then i mean there was there wasn't a clear thought about how uh, you know we could do better at that point at that point it was like you know somehow let us just complete this session and then we will think about what to do in the next sessions at that point of course everybody was in this boat not just in india but all over the world so what i found was that for example terence stow has a uh, has a blog where he uh, he put out this uh, message saying that you know if you have different ways in which you're using technology to teach please share it and so on and so there was a lot of input that was coming worldwide on the kinds of technology that one could use and one also spoke to colleagues and so on and amber who's the uh, convener of this conference had told me that he was using an xp pen now at that point even though i had i mean this was sometime actually in april may so i knew about tabs and so on but um, ordering it was not possible because we were under lockdown and uh, even uh, uh, delivery online delivery uh, giants were not really working at this but by june when uh, we had finished with the first session uh, we were able to at least uh, you know realize that the easiest way for us and without spending too much money would be to get one of these uh, pen tablets which would act like a larger mouse pad for us to write and in the meantime the university was also having a lot of discussion on the because students had got scattered all over even though we are a very delhi centric university 85% of our students come from delhi they are supposed to be uh, from delhi state but of course we had uh, students who went back to their village uh, there was internet access problem there was device problem people didn't have devices they had their mobile some of them didn't have smart phones uh people came from very economically deprived backgrounds they could not afford even a internet access package you know even if they were in delhi so there were all these multiple problems that students were themselves facing uh so so far i talked about what the teachers did but for the students then the university had realized that okay if we are going to make everybody attend classes online then we also have to make sure that they are provided with some basic access you know otherwise there is going to be no learning from their side so uh, even though we are a state university and even if you take decisions like this it takes a few months to um, you know actually uh, manage it but what we did then was to systematically ask our students who are the ones who faced problems in terms of money to uh subscribe to an internet package so once we got that data there was money sanctioned from the university for the students to uh, avail of internet packages that was one thing we did the second thing was those students who did not have any devices they, that took a little longer but tabs were bought by the university and 
they were uh, given to the students who required it um, after you know their teachers or whoever could certify that they really did need the tab so it was given out as university property to be returned to the university so these were some things that we did and then we had whatsapp groups with students where we were constantly asking them about uh, you know what they needed and so on and so forth but at the same time when our new session started particularly for the older students um, i had to teach a class whom i had not seen before at all i'd never met them okay so uh, the first time i uh, started class you know in the physical mode i would spend the day basically talking to the students getting to know them finding out you know why they were interested in doing maths and so on and i tried doing the same thing in the online mode and then i realized okay many students don't have a device in which the video is working okay if uh, everybody switches on their video and audio you can't of course conduct the class the uh, students who have who have weak internet access it just drops there so so i realized that okay maybe one by one i can have some idea of what they look like and can talk to them but it's not really a process that takes place in you know the same way as you can do in a physical classroom so what was ultimately decided was as a class we decided that um they would uh, you know uh, write things in the chat box if they had questions and uh, that everybody would keep their video and audio off except me and by then of course i had a tab and i was you know being able to write on it and use it like a blackboard but at the same time i was not aware of what um, what you know software would i use in my computer to use the tab to write on so someone had suggested paint now in paint what i found was that uh, every time i start, had to start a new page i had to start a new file and uh, it was very painful and then thankfully um, we had the mta conference last year and uh, we uh, it, one of the and the pandemic had uh, you know and that was the first conference where i we had sessions on people demonstrating the use of various things and i remember uh one of the people um, uh, surendra reddy who had spoken last time gave us an idea of something called one note microsoft one note which is freely available and then i in fact switched to that once uh, you know uh, he had mentioned it so my basic setup was a xp pen tab and a um, uh, a microsoft one note in which i was writing uh what i did find was that i could not convert it into a pdf directly if i did then um it went into a landscape mode and cut off the end of the sentences so the the uh, the you know jugad as we call it in uh, delhi i did was to you can basically one note saves everything as a picture so you can just copy the picture and paste it into a word file and convert it into a pdf and then you have pdfs which you can share with the students we use google classroom uh, and google meet for generating our things okay this is the technology end of things but what happened in the classroom i mean i cannot tell you it's the i think it's been the most terrible experience i've had as a teacher in my long <laughs> i've been teaching since 1993 um what i realized is that this is the worst way in which i could possibly teach particularly to an undergraduate class the the research level teaching was perfectly fine see with the undergraduates even with all this help that we provided them we could not insist on attendance right because somebody might have uh, a problem at that particular point when they are trying to join the class and this is something i realized even if you have a 2 gb data package for a day you know if you are trying to attend five classes in the day online it just disappears very very rapidly okay so so the so you, you couldn't insist on the student attending the class there were about out of a class of 30 odd students seven or eight would attend the class 
and even that you didn't know whether they were actually attending the class sometimes you're asking questions and then there is you know hardly one or two persons actually writing a response so uh, so it was very very frustrating in having any kind of interaction with the student in the class and one couldn't even force it on them in a sense by insisting that you had to have attendance uh, it was compulsory and you know and things like that and then come when we came to assessment um i mean even when we have physical assessments there is a tendency for students to cheat and it's unfortunate that often students are learning a subject not necessarily for learning it but for getting a degree and my view for with any of them has always been it doesn't matter you come in to do a degree in mathematics i will from my part ensure that you learn something and go away right you're not going to just get a degree out of this now if you have that kind of an attitude then you tend to use your assessments very carefully right because the assessment is not only seen as a tool to test what they have learned but it is also seen as a tool for them to make them learn because you're not you're going to give them thinking questions and hopefully they will realize soon after the first test that simply regurgitating material is not going to help them to do well okay so that is the kind of principle with which i have always functioned and i wanted to continue to function in that sense but you can't proctor there was no question of proctoring any uh, exam or test which was held online simply because the bandwidth wouldn't allow it people didn't have videos and so on so what we did was we decided okay it's based on trust right we will give you a question paper which will be uploaded just before your test you sit at your home but we did not make it an open book test so we said you're not supposed to look at any material you're supposed to learn it and we are not checking you but you write your answers and we did we kept a limited amount of time for the exam what it would take for them to actually write such an exam that that is the time we kept and we just kept another 15 20 minutes for them to upload and all this was done through the google classroom so they were logged in throughout and they could leave the classroom only after they had uploaded their answer sheet now we had uh, i mean their students their and their undergraduate students and how much ever you tell them that you know even if we, uh, we obviously you can't catch them copying when they're not you're not seeing them when they're writing the exam right but you can find out when they're when you're correcting right you find five students writing the same wrong answer <laughs> the chances it's because they've copied from each other right so so uh, then it then started the whole rigmar all of you know i'm going to cut marks if you copied uh, you could make out who were the series of people who had copied you know so all that went in and then we discovered that they had whatsapp groups for copying so they would exchange uh, one person's done one answer uh, the other one does another one first they also had ways of contacting senior students to try and get them to solve for answers or they were looking up the net and so the thing but the point is we caught them when they did all of these things and we were pretty harsh on them in terms of you know uh, initially we just cut some marks then i started giving zeros in the exams but it still doesn't stop them it i mean overall the class maybe didn't do it but a section of the class definitely did it and the last thing i want to come back to is what have they actually learned through this process that is my biggest worry right we've tried our level best to teach in whatever way we can we've tried our level best they've probably also tried their best in their own way but what has happened at the end of it all i mean i cannot for certain say that a student who is leaving from my university having graduated the degree has actually uh learned the way they would have learned when we were not online frankly that is my conclusion and um now we are in a situation where we'll be moving to blended classrooms you know maybe uh, students will be allowed to come to the classroom but 
it's not compulsory for them but you also have to uh, you know accommodate students who come physically as well as to um, uh, broadcast it and i was i'm i'm tired of sitting and writing on a tab in front of my computer i want to write on the board i want to you know look at the uh, the thing so i have pleaded with my university that please at least for maths teachers you must have some smart classrooms equipped because one doesn't know when we are going to see the end of this pandemic and i would much rather go into my classroom and you know have a few students sitting in front of me see from their face whether they have understood what i'm saying change my explanation if i see that they are looking blank you know ask them questions and have them uh, answer and then figure out what they have learned and i think this part of it i really really missed uh, it's okay with research scholars i mean they they are committed uh, it's one on one and you know i can you know we managed to have really good discussions but with my undergrad students uh, i really want to have physical classrooms back so thank you thank you geeta yeah exactly 20 minutes it's very nice of you thank you yeah okay uh, thank you again i mean you really talked heart and mind of a teacher i mean all of us we have gone through and this thing yes really very nicely put yeah so we go to the next speaker so we have with us uh, dr d sukumar Sukumar is an associate professor in the Department of Mathematics, Indian Institute of Technology, Hyderabad. He did his uh, PhD in uh, 2007 from IIT Madras. He worked in Ramanujan Institute for Advanced Study in Mathematics, Madras University, Indian Statistical Institute, Bangalore, Indian Institute of Sciences, Bangalore. National Institute of Technology, Karnataka, in various capacities. Before, I mean, uh, during the period 2007 to 2010, before he joined uh, IIT Hyderabad in 2010, as I know. Yeah. So he works in functional analysis and numerical linear algebra, and he has written a fantastic book on functional analysis, co-authored by Professor S. Kumarishan. Sukumar is a member of the MTTS Trust, uh, and he is one of the team members instrumental in shaping the shaping of running the MTTS program successfully during this pandemic time on online mode. So he is uh, basically he is going to give us some idea uh, behind the success of MTTS program during. Uh, this pandemic period, and also he has done a fantastic experiment recently, as a part of a follow-up program of MTTS program, using online material, and involving students, okay, and and guiding the students to learn themselves from the uh, available online materials, which is there is no doubt of materials in the web now, but. the students there that i mean they don't know how to learn them so this experiment also will be i mean put some light on okay so here is uh, sukumar so his uh, talk will be effective methodology in online classroom and use of online resources for students learning over to you sukumar i hope you are able to see the shared screen yeah it's fine yeah uh, so first of all let me thank uh, mathematics teachers association uh, for uh, giving this opportunity to uh, share the experience uh, of last one and a half two years uh, the title is as uh, professor baba has mentioned this effective methodology in an online classroom the way that i interpret is that uh, we had certain methodologies in our regular physical classrooms and how effectively which we can actually transfer to the online way so that's the way that i interpret this title and uh, coming back to the second part this use of online uh, resources uh, very recently in the follow up course of uh, mtts we have done an experiment 
where the students actively learn from a video. So this is the second part that I would be also looking at. So overall, uh, I will uh, we will deal with few points. One is uh, the typical interactive session, which all of us want to and have to. And uh, I'll also just touch upon uh, this prayer group discussion, which very much missing in this uh, pandemic time, uh, where the learning happens very much within the students' community. And uh, the self-assessment, where we want to look at the primary goal is just assessing the students. Here in the other contrast, uh, the self-assessment, where the students assess themselves and as a byproduct, uh, they will be taking a lot of effective uh, participation in the classroom and the classroom also becomes very effective. And uh, as, as a fourth point, uh, we'll look at the feedbacks, some of the uh, base that we can actually make sure uh, the students are in connection with the, the faculty who is delivering the lecture. And at the last, uh, I'll, I'll spend a little more time on this active learning uh, experiment that we have done in recent MTTS uh, follow-up course. Uh, before going ahead, let me uh, make it clear uh, that all the methods, whatever uh, we are giving are the plans in this uh, small talk, they are not just hypothetical suggestions. They are actually tried. They are also tested. In fact, they are also practiced and have so enhanced with the feedback and we continue to improvise on all these things. So it's nothing like just hypothetical. It's or most of the things you can actually implement uh, in your day-to-day -day class. Okay, so coming to the interactive session, uh, the initial uh, urges in the regular classes, we will ask some questions and possibly we can go around the students and look at their notebooks and uh, get the feedback, how they are understanding. And among the students also, they look at each uh, notebooks and then try to get if there is any mistake. But the same kind of questions, if you ask in this online method, there is a difficulty because they don't uh, will be able to communicate as the previous speaker was mentioning. They may not be able to open their uh, speakers or speak through the audio, which needs a lot more uh, bandwidth. So what we found out is that uh, asking the question in an SR note type where uh, the tool that we are using right now, Zoom, uh, enables it very easily that you can ask a question. In fact, uh, you can convert any kind of question into an SR now question, and then you can quickly get the feedback and you can get the pulse of the overall class, how much they are following. Uh, to your surprise, uh, the students also very uh, active and they want to also learn. Many of them we have noticed. And uh, it's not that every time all the students said yes, all the students know. It was always they were very genuinely opening up and saying if they understood, yes, and if they did not understand, no. So it was quite interesting. Uh, again, uh, as a side remark, in each of the slides, you will see some uh, lines are in green and some lines are in yellow. So the green lines are the one which you should uh, must and should possibly try. You can go for it. And the yellow uh, text is kind of a preferred, preferred thing. You can try it out. Of course, the other points also. Now, uh, coming back to this uh, interactive session, the aim is uh, not just you deliver and then they will follow and then they'll go ahead. Instead of that, by asking this kind of simple questions, you can also make them to think along with you. And sometimes by asking an appropriate question, you will enable them to think even ahead of you so that your delivery becomes easier as compared to uh, regular sessions. Uh, because uh, you, have, you have enabled them and tested them in a right way. The second thing is uh, peer group discussion, where the aim is uh, the way that we go ahead in the MTTS or in the regular classes is that after you deliver a lecture, say about some time, and then you can create this breakout room, which is available in the Zoom uh, feature, where a small groups can go together and then they will discuss. And the aim of this, is not just to ask some extra questions or give some assignments to solve them in that uh, breakout room or discussion room. Instead, whatever you have done in that particular class, they will go through the material again. And uh, then they, in their fresh memory, they'll be able to go through and possibly by discussing with the other students, they can patch up. 
and in this case uh, we also had a privilege mtts has the privilege of having a lot of volunteers faculty postdocs to become a mentor uh, i'll come back to this in a minute uh, they help this process to be more smooth and helpful for the students and uh, in this place if you give your uh, transcripts whatever you are writing in a pen tablet or anything we don't uh, we don't want uh, the students to write or take notes as soon as you finish the class and if you just share with the students they will use this and they can share in their respective rooms and quickly go through what are the difficulties and then they will be able to patch it up in that way the peer group discussion it was initially difficult but very soon student feel that the benefits of that and they will open up so coming back to this mentor role i am we are calling this as a a word that we use in uh, mentor uh, but you can convert that into some of your research scholars who are helping in your course or it could be postdocs who are helping in your course or it could be some mphil students who are helping or a senior student or some of the good students in the class itself class itself can also play this role of mentor and two things they could do one in a small group typically students will not open up or discuss anything so they will actually enable this group uh, discussion that means this new methodology of teaching and learning among themselves in an online mode has to be enabled so it, the smooth transition somebody should be there to help them and that's what the main role of the mentor and they also help in breaking out uh, their hindrance in speaking out thinking that i may say wrong or i may be uh, i may not be able to communicate very well with the language kind of thing so all these kind of things can be taken care with the help of a mentor and uh, if if you can afford to have a mentor throughout your course then actually you can look at a very grassroots level students growth as well as uh, their overall performance improvement in throughout the course and uh, the next thing that we want to emphasize is on the self assessment compared to the assessing the students what is the self assessment this may be after a small number of classes you have done you can have a, a you can have a assessment in terms of just objective questions or even small uh, writing questions but mostly objective uh, here the aim is not to check whether they are doing right calculation or whether they are recalling from their memory appropriately that's not the aim the aim is whether they are understanding the basic definition basic concepts whether they are able to go through with that so the questions are also has to be in that type so the uh, suggestion uh, that you can surely go through is that uh, the mentors or the faculty who are there in the class during the class you will be asking some interactive question that questions can be transferred into self assessment questions so the questions are very very simple but it actually test and notice that when you ask this in the class some of the students say yes and some of the students may say no so that questions if you convert and make it as uh, objective questions then the students on their own time they will go through and they themselves will realize that what are their difficulty how to patch up and they will actually help uh, your delivery much better in the uh, subsequent classes and uh, in the mtts uh, we have allowed them to take uh, multiple times of this uh, question to your surprise that those students uh, hesitate to taking test most of them took more than two or three times because they are fighting uh, against themselves there is not they are not comparing they are not going to give the marks so they take a test and see that what is my grade and then okay let me try once again so these uh, randomizing the questions can be done very easily probably chandru uh, will be touching upon in the uh, next uh, presentation and uh, coming back to the feedback there are three kind of uh, feedbacks that we could use uh, one is um, looking at the poll question which is available in the zoom i am specific to this uh, zoom at the end of each session or after the group discussion we can have a poll question again the question here the questions are not about asking how do you prove this or whether this uh, this series converges where that happens not that kind of question the questions are in a sense just to re emphasize the important concepts whether you have understood even that is a very good question so that they will think whether really i understand and students have, uh, students were really genuine in answering that and uh, they could understand in the discussion is there any trouble that you have made 
you can also ask questions like were you able to complete completely revise the material that is done in the class even that could be a question and uh, one more effective thing is that you can ask them a uh, question which is a kind of homework or a commitment to the students that will you be able to go through this proof after this if you ask that question if they say yes then they know that when they go back they have given a kind of commitment so it's a kind of uh, self commitment they are making so this way the poll question can be used not to test them no need of lot of memory all three or four questions can be answered within a couple of two or three minutes the second uh, kind of feedback uh, remember this poll feedback gives you a, a very good feedback immediately after the class and at the end of each class it's very easy to set it up uh, probably chandru will be also um, giving comments on this and the second thing is an earlier mini feedback all of us know as teachers we take feedback but mostly at the end of the course but uh, if you ask an earlier feedback as after completing maybe few classes then uh, specific questions if you ask in the feedback the students will come out and say that what are their difficulties both academically or otherwise even they you can ask question that whether my audio is clear whether my video is uh, visible whether i am writing legibly so these kind of questions can be asked and so that you can do the course correction very early uh one preferable preferred thing is that if you if you can have if you can hold it then you can allow the students to open up and share a interactive session and in the interactively they can speak out so that everybody will uh, express themselves and uh, to your surprise if you allow a question with uh, non non uh, means beyond the academic boundary and if you ask them to open and say what are their difficulties they are very good and uh, opening up the things and uh, it's actually mutually kind of motivating the students themselves also understand and we the faculty also can understand the students problem and students also understand what are the difficulty of the uh, uh, faculty and uh, at this point i'll also just mention there are of course a previous speaker has mentioned a lot of difficulties both at the student level and the faculty level which comes out through this kind of smaller feedback in a much earlier stage now as i said i'll go to the last part of uh, this presentation which is a small uh, which is an experiment um, started with a different uh, idea but it has come up very nicely i'm very happy to share this learning experience that uh, the preamble is the following that all the students may not have a good teaching learning experiment that we all of us are aware of but there is no dearth of uh, video things in the present situation there are plenty of videos available online but the students should know how to harness the benefit out of this and how to actively learn from these kind of materials it's it's in parallel to just because textbooks are there we cannot assume that students will learn on their own so it's a kind of create a slightly parallel line with that so with that preamble we'll get in there will be we we have done this experiment with five stages and as experiment is the following the setup is there will be an online video available and a faculty and students meet to learn the material from that video and how we are going to learn that the video will be a video will run and the faculty will stop at appropriate places and ask appropriate questions and also maybe uh, questions which are not asked in the video but but something connected to that so the students will actively look in to the video very seriously and then try to understand and try to get more out of it in fact uh, much more than what is actually done in the video lecture so we made it like uh, quickly i'll go through this there are five stages we made it as a kind of module one is the there are two roles one is a faculty playing a role uh, somebody is playing as a faculty role and somebody as participants which are students right now the stage one the faculty will remain as a faculty and the students are students and you play the video and pass at appropriate place and ask questions like uh, do you see any example here sometimes uh, is there any example which is not satisfying or do you understand this uh, notion intuitively do you believe that this theorem will be true is there any geometric understanding these are kind of questions but most of you uh, would have come across even uh, uh, polias questions uh, way of understanding things so a lot of such questions can be asked and uh, more importantly uh, two things that i want to say the preferred question is always 
try to pre- create analogy between even subjects or beyond uh, beyond just courses so that the students will see the analogy and connection among the different courses so they will get uh, benefit and they'll be able to withdraw something that they have already learned by going through the parallel learning and uh, as i said this coming back to the point that you can allow the students to think even ahead of you by asking the question what would be the next question sometimes by stopping the video okay so this is the first stage where the faculty will play the role of uh, a kind of um, uh, stopping and pausing and then asking questions and then students will be answering very actively the second stage is that as uh, we have the small group discussions so they will go into their smaller groups and now the mentors whom i mentioned as uh, postdocs or mphil students or the senior students or some of the best students in the class they will play the role of the faculty and ask the questions to the students in the classroom and so at least one or two students get trained in this how to watch a video and how to ask and how to get the more out of this kind of information and in this case of course the mentors will help whenever the need arises and with this uh, local training in a smaller group where they don't have much of hindrance and they start speaking they'll come to the bigger group larger group and this is the stage 3 where uh, the students uh, students are faculty or the mentor any of them can play the role of a faculty of course the students are also there so the only one person will have the uh, option of stopping the video so a student will ask sir can you stop here i want to ask a question and can you stop here i have a doubt here so that's the kind of uh, interaction happens at this stage but in a larger uh, group okay and here i just want to mention uh, some of you may be having this experience of uh, giving some assignments or asking the students to give a seminar presentation this can actually develop in that stage so you previously when we want to give a seminar uh, as uh, previous speaker mentioned they may not have pen tablet and sharing things and all preparing the slides and other things but right now with this video as a tool they can run and very easily somebody can run the video for them they look at their video and then ask the question and engage the students so that the whole group gets a lot of benefit so it can actually develop as a seminar presentation the, the fourth stage is um, asking the students to watch alone because all the times we cannot expect uh, the students to have a small group to discuss so they should uh, learn actively how to get the benefit out of watching the video on on themselves uh, so they have to play both the roles of faculty as well as students so that's the fourth stage and once these four stages are done then the last stage is uh, it's where uh, we have allowed the students to do this and uh, they have very very enthusiastically participated in this so they students have invited their own friends and they have conducted this kind of uh, online uh, learning with the video so the student play a role of a faculty and other students will be answering and other students also will actively participate in asking questions and um, what what is the overall uh, impact is that they were able to get this charm and uh, get got the idea they, they, the students are very very perceptive and very very um, uh, very inviting and they have learned how to do this we are very excited to share this actually experience and they have learned the art very nicely and uh, uh, they learned uh, the active way of doing things so these are the five stages so i'll just consolidate Uh, this the faculty with the students is the stage 1 and mentors with the students is the stage 2 with the small group and anyone becoming a faculty or the students in a larger group so that the hindrance goes away and the fourth step is student watching with himself playing both the roles and the last stage is by the students for the students so that we actually see that not only uh, the they can actually fly on their own so these are the five stages that we made it and i'll consolidate so we looked at what is interactive session where certain things can be done and peer group discussion possibly at the end of each interactive session and self assessment after few classes and the feedback at the earlier stage and also the poll and we have also done this active learning and i will end up with about uh, about 3 minutes of video where we have put up all uh, these uh, experiment that we have made where uh, faculty being uh, faculty and students and mentor and students and student with students so allow me to share that
Uh, are you able to see this? Yeah, yeah, fine. Okay, oh, just a minute. In this context, what is the question that are you can ask? Yeah. How do you conclude that this has a subsequence which is convergent? Assuming this theorem. Mm. Why do you say that it has a subsequence which is convergent? What is the property that you want to use? Sin n. Oh, sin is periodic function. Okay, that is not uh, relevant here. Look at the statement, what it says. Oh. Oh, sign is bounded uh, sequence. Yes. Yeah. So it says that if I assume this theorem, there is a convergence of sequence. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, so yes. set least is total. Converged to L. What do I know? Yes. I'll proceed. So, so question is like that. Uh, how can you so, so that the sequence Xn is converging to L? What we what method would you adopt? Hi, someone speak to him. Okay. So, so I think is... we... Yeah, proceed, yes. proceed. Uh, we need to estimate uh, Xn, where does means Xn minus L, mod of Xn minus L. Uh, right. We need to estimate mod of Xn minus L yes. by using the fact estimate of mod a minus l and mod of b n minus l so, so now you can play uh, in terms of pictures can we guess uh, what would be next just click on the yes button from reactions so that we can get to know whether you can uh, re reply non-verbally or not whenever a question is asked to you in the form of yes or no you just have to reply non-verbally that will be available in this uh, reaction section okay 15 have replied so far how many of us are there out of 30 15 have replied 16 okay and whenever you have some question then just raise your hand there is an option of raising hand raise your hand we will pause the video and we will come up to you Suppose I, by mistake, a student write like this. He says A is bounded above in R if for every X in A, okay, there exists alpha in R such so that X is less than or equal to alpha. Suppose he, so, he will say, sir, I wrote how this. How many of you think uh, these two statements are saying the same thing? If you think that these two are not saying, conveying the same things, say no. no. See, if you are going to check the paper of this student, what will you do? You will give him correct or incorrect? Yes, and do you think both the both statements convey the same meaning? Yes. Okay. Why is that so? Sign. Sign. Please repeat it. Okay. So in the first statement, we are saying that there is an alpha in R. So alpha is already being picked such that given any element of the set that element has to be less than or equal to my alpha but in the second statement I that's all i have to share thank you yeah the, the last part was i mean this is students uh, doing themselves right yeah. the last part is just students conducting for their student um, uh, other friends okay so your time is uh, up so you have exceeded three minutes yeah, I conclude, please. Yeah, fine. I, I think the video concludes everything. This, uh, okay. they, the students could uh, actually grasp what we are expecting and they could come up very nicely. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sukumar. Yeah. So we now go for the next panelist. So we have with us uh, A.S. Andrasekharan, fondly called Chandru. Everyone knows him, no, no, knows him as Chandru. So he's a faculty member of School of Mathematics and Computer Science, Central University of Tamil Nadu. He did his PhD in IIT Madras in 2010. He worked in uh, University of Hyderabad, Beach Pilani Gua Campus, uh, and as a Hyderabad 
and I am indoor uh, for shorter durations in various capacities before joining the Central University of Tamil Nadu in 2012. So he has years of experience in uh, several open source uh, packages, including Moodle, a learning management system, and Koha, a library management system. He has been managing the uh, university library management system for the last several years. Uh, Sandra Zagaran is an active member of the MTTS team and is instrumental in setting the technological platforms for the MTTS program during this pandemic time. So he's uh, going to, I mean, present to us some certain things what he did or he suggests uh, on the line use of technology in effective learning and assessment on online platform. So here is Chandra Sagaran. Thank you, Professor Baba. So can you see my presentation? Yeah, you can be slightly louder, please. Slightly larger. Louder, louder. Yeah, louder. Okay. Ah. I'll try to be close to the computer. If it is not enough, please let yeah. me know. I'll... Yeah, this is enough. Yeah. This will be enough. Yeah. Thank you. So I thank uh, the organizers of uh, Mathematics Association of India for inviting or giving me an opportunity to speak about my experience this year. So the important part is uh, the teaching methodology, which uh, Sukumar has done it well. And what I'm going to do is uh, kind of uh, what are the technologies we can use to facilitate that important thing to happen in a classroom? Okay. That's the whole idea. Uh, so most of the technologies which uh, I'm going to present here may be aware to most of you uh, because uh, you are all forced to do this. You, you might have searched, you might have uh, got in touch with these things uh, in some way or other through various uh, resources. But then what I'm going to share is uh, how I have used it earlier before pandemic and after pandemic part of the situation and how it has been used in MTTS. Okay, that's uh, the important part which I'll be sharing. So I have divided uh, into four parts this lecture. So something about uh, teaching mathematics online and video conferencing platforms, learning management systems and other handy tools. So the abstract of my talk is something like this. The teaching learning process of abstract concepts in mathematics uh, in online mode uh, has a lot of challenges uh, for both teacher and student. And especially I would say that uh, sometimes students have more challenges than us uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, we, are, we have more access to facilities than the student. Uh, in this talk, we mentioned some of the important technologies that help overcome these challenges to a great extent. Uh, I'm saying only from the point of view of teacher. Uh, on the way, we also mentioned some best choices and uh, ways to use the available technologies based on our recent experience. So the challenges are uh, teaching itself is a challenge. Teaching mathematics is a challenge even in a physical classroom. And... Uh, and most likely students learn by doing mathematics than by listening to us. So you have to make them do in a classroom. That's what the interactive session, which uh, uh, Sukumar is explaining. Uh, you make them do means you have to make them think along with you or even think ahead uh, so that they learn things, uh, especially that is the challenge with uh, mathematics teaching. And uh, the other thing is uh, the easiest, the, the, the bit, uh, Solvable thing is availability of basic accessories for teaching and universities and colleges may provide certain things to the teachers. And then the third point is keeping the class interactive to ensure students learning. And then uh, assessments. Uh, assessments are generally meant to check uh, the learning of the student. But now nowadays uh, it's mostly used for recording the student's performance. Uh, and in, in the overall uh, Indian education system, recording has become, uh, record keeping has become more important than uh, actual teaching learning process. That's a sad state. That's my personal experience. And I'll go to the teaching tools and accessories. So if you want to have effective learning, I would suggest or I would recommend, or we would recommend based on our experience, the following. 
uh, it's better to have a laptop uh, with a camera and microphone. And nowadays, uh, we have good uh, headphones with uh, noise cancelling mics and all available. If needed, you can have an external uh, camera also. And uh, a graphics tablet with pen. Uh, this one called Wacom One Graphics Tablet. It is, it is essentially uh, for uh, graphics artists who draw pictures in uh, computers. But then uh, we can use it to write and present it to students. And generally, mathematics teacher doesn't have the luxury of using a Beamer presentation like this, especially in a classroom teaching, because uh, uh, generally Beamer presentations are any type of PowerPoint presentations. Uh, we tend to go faster and the students may not uh, catch what we are going to say. That's a disadvantage of uh, going to class with a presentation, especially for mathematics teacher. And here we, we felt that Wacom One graphics tablet along with a Linux system, a Linux computer, uh, having an external app. Now there is an external plus plus app and that uh, the screenshot shows you what it is. And the, at the bottom, there is uh, some write-up, uh, which I have taken screenshot from one of my friend's talk. And then uh, we need at least a good internet connectivity, at least one Mbps of internet speed. Even today, many places, it's very difficult to get this, uh, even this speed. Uh, and uh, a video conferencing platform. Now let's see one, one by one. So, uh, video conferencing platforms, when the pandemic started, people started looking at all these uh, for teaching, especially WhatsApp and Google Meet and Skype are all generally for uh, general meetings, sometimes online interviews, etc. earlier before pandemic, but later they, they, have, they are also used for teaching. And, and the first thing uh, we started with is uh, in MTTS, uh, we initially started uh, trying Jitsi because the Jitsi had right hand option even before Zoom. And then we found Zoom and uh, Zoom had so many advantages and which now, by now everybody is aware of what are the advantages of having Zoom with you. And that's one of the reasons we are conducting this conference in Zoom. And then I have uh, another thing is, uh, another alternative which is equivalent to Zoom or even better than Zoom, could become much, much better than Zoom is the blue button. It is an open source software. Uh, this software, uh, it comes as a plugin in Moodle learning management system. And it was uh, developed by Blindside Networks in 2007 and it has been continuously improved. Nothing is developed. Whatever we are discussing is not developed during the pandemic. It has been developed long back. Uh, what's the meaning of it? It's advisable to use your own dedicated server for the software is. This is a standalone software which you can download, customize whatever you want to do it. But then if you install it in a server and you use the client uh, in uh, very various ways, blind click blue button client software and to connect like Zoom. See, we in Zoom, what we do, we log into something, we start a meeting and then whatever we speak or uh, our video, whatever it is, it's uh, being transmitted to other people. Live, live stream, live, in, uh, in a lifetime, you are able to see each other and you are able to chat. So that per, that will be done by the server. So in uh, if you see this, uh, like Zoom, this big blue button, although the software is open source, if you want to use it, you have to pay money or you have to depend only on the test server run by Blindside Network. What is the test server? They maintain a test server where you can just check how it works. But then uh, we were successful in conducting around a four-day workshop with two lectures per day in our university with a big blue button, uh, button test server. And it works very much like Zoom. Maybe some kind of uh, small, small problems are there, but then they can be overcome very easily. And uh, in, in this situation, what I feel is, uh, in some sense, uh, suppose in uh, the government of India or some big institutes of this country can come up uh, with a facility where they have a big server and a team of people who will install and run Big Blue Button. And this will solve the uh, problem of paying money to Zoom and small, small colleges and uh, places where it's difficult to have money for Zoom or any other thing that they have to manage with 
something like Google Meet or WhatsApp with less features, they can go for feature rich big blue button and a better video conferencing platform, better learning that way. So if some of them, uh, like I said, some big institutes can come up and spend or invest on this and then share it to uh, other uh, nearby institutes, uh, that will be a great thing and it can be done regional level, at regional level. But uh, Big Blue Button is not very popular in some sense. That's the thing. And then as you know, Zoom features, the important features which I like about is uh, registered sessions. And if I start a course in my classroom, I'll start with uh, a registration and then I don't have to bother about allowing them inside or uh, when they get disconnected, what to do at all, I don't have any problem. So, and then nonverbal feedbacks and polls, breakout rooms uh, with the possibility of pre-assigning them. And if you are going to have a regular part of your teaching is a group discussion or group assignments or group, group, do group activity, something is there, you can always pre-assign and keep the room ready. And single meeting credentials may be used for a complete course, uh, best video recording and compression. And this best video recording and compression is very, very much useful. You can just keep it uh, stored to your lecture. And in case some students, and most of the students have this uh, problem of uh, uh, low internet, uh, they don't have proper device to connect to and all. And if you want to help them, you can just uh, keep this recording and you can share them via YouTube or something so that they can later learn. So this way, what we are doing is we are not uh, depriving an interested student of the, their opportunity to learn in some sense. Just because it's a online learning, uh, he should not be deprived of uh, learning possibility. And then we have custom live streaming. And now we know how to live stream and all. It is useful, actually. And the next thing is uh, the important part of this nonverbal communication is, as we see in, uh, we say in MTTS, uh, it's always uh, better not to give the answer when a question is asked to the student. Okay. For example, if I ask a student uh, a question in an MTTS classroom, we always discourage it. The reason is uh, we don't want other students to stop thinking. Okay. The students who are listening, who are trying to think and get the answer, they'll start thinking about the answer the other student has said. And sometimes if they did not get the correct answer, they will get demoralized, etc. So what we do is we always ask them to raise their hand in the physical classroom. So here we use yes, no button. We convert all the questions to yes, no form. And once things are converted to yes, no form, uh, what will happen is uh, we'll choose some students. We'll choose those both people who have said yes or who, those who have said no, whatever it is, whichever is the correct answer. To those people. We'll ask them and we'll try to find uh, what they have understood, etc. And all we'll go from that. And uh, the, the number, the number of people who said yes, the number of people who said no, it will be useful uh, to understand how much you have, you are, whatever you have just spoke or just uh, taught them, how much it has reached the students correctly, or most of them have not understood. These kind of uh, inferences you can take from these numbers. And these numbers are available uh, for co-hosts and hosts in a Zoom meeting. And a very important thing is we use rise hands for asking doubts and uh, automatically when uh, somebody raises hands, they'll come at the top of the list of participants so that you know who is uh, raising your hand and uh, what they, when, when they speak also, they'll stay there. And when they lower their hand, they'll go back to the alphabetical order in the list. And then, uh, yeah, another important thing is these breakout rooms. In breakout rooms, we have uh, many things. We have used it for uh, peer group discussions, as uh, Sukumar said. And uh, you can you can otherwise, you can use uh, for group assignments, as uh, many people have this uh, perception or it is all even true, in most senses that uh, it's not that uh, everywhere the number of students uh, who are interested to learn uh, is available. The, the proportion of interested students is actually less. Uh, so what happens is if you want to make them learn, especially in a group, uh, in an online teaching, you can create breakout rooms and give them a problem to solve and you can monitor. Uh, like I say, a teacher will be a host or a co-host, your own mentors will be there. You can ask them to monitor what they are doing, whether they are discussing and all, etc. And that is possible. In uh, MTTS, we use it for group discussions as well as for, we use it for online counseling of the students. And the counseling is essentially meant to assess the uh, background of the mathematics. Okay. So in MTTs, we always 
think of uh, when the student comes to MTTS, whether he is uh, learning something. So we have three levels of programs and we will try to uh, shift students uh, so that they actually get benefited out of this program. So we did this online counseling using this breakout rooms. And we have done many other works using breakout rooms. Okay. And here also the counseling means you can actually counsel students uh, in other way also. Those students who have difficulty in uh, coping up with their goals, etc., and all, you can take them to a different room and discuss it stuff, discussing with other students in the main room, etc. And, and nowadays, the, the recent updates, the Zoom is keep on updating because they, they have big uh, customer uh, list and they keep updating the facilities. There are many options now. Uh, students can join, students and faculty can join themselves in uh, any room. If they know their group, which group they have to join, but we can have pre-assigned rooms. Uh, we can have uh, the time, timings, etc. Many, many options are there to start uh, doing this. I don't want to spend much on this uh, Zoom. So let us go to the polls. The polls uh, are something like uh, uh, a quick uh, survey kind of thing, uh, which is available in uh, Zoom. And whatever I say, polls, breakout rooms, etc. All these features are available with big blue button also. That's why I keep stressing big blue button is an open source thing and if somebody can take some uh, epsilon step and it can be useful to many people. And a poll can be used as a quick feedback on what is learned and the poll report can be shared instantly. It's also receive, it is also useful to re receive a possible commitment from the student participant. For example, if somebody says I have not understood this, so uh, we can just uh, set the questions in such a way that uh, they give a commitment. For example, uh, how much did you understand the particular concept taught today? And then the, the answers could be like this. Yes, I understood very well. Uh, the second option could be I have understood after the discussion. And the third option could be uh, I have not yet understood, but I will be revising it before the next class. So that could be the answer. So the students will have a positive feel about the three answers. Whether they say the first option, it is like they are saying that they have understood. When they are go for the second one they said I, I i used the discussion room to understand this and the third option will be saying that no i have not yet understood but still i will try to understand this or revise this before the next class that kind of commitments can be obtained in the polls so that's what uh, sukumar was describing how to create poll questions and all so these are all some part of uh, learning to to make the learning effective these are something uh, although the facilities are available everybody know the facilities how we use it is very important even a small change can make a big difference in the learning part for the students. And these yeah, small another parts... another five minutes you have. Oh, okay, okay, then I'll go for. A... Oh, thank you. So the next part is uh, the management part with the Moodle. This is where uh, uh, we have handled uh, the whole uh, course, entities courses. And uh, this is a general uh, feature. It's actually a management thing means for uh, students, teachers, and other type of administrators, even parents can be included here. And everybody will have their own viewpoints. As a teacher, I can go and edit the course, edit, upload materials, create quizzes, create assignments, et cetera, et cetera, I can do, evaluate assignments, do grades, et cetera. As a student, I can go and download my materials. I can see my assignment, assignments. I can see the schedule or the timeline of works available for me, uh, upcoming quiz, calendars, etc. I can chat with my own classmates and uh, I can see the progress of what I have done in each course. Uh, there are several things I can do. As a teacher, as a parent, if you inclu in include parents also here, and they can see their what their children are uh, up to in their classroom, etc. Essentially, that is meant for uh, school students. In college level, we don't do that. So this is uh, just a screenshot. And you can try this uh, demo here. And the demo is very much uh, useful. You can you can have all features. Okay, this is a screenshot from the demo. And the very important advantage is open source package. Uh, you can, can be customized. And once you create a develop your course, it can be reused. Uh, it has uh, LaTeX support, MathJax support. Uh, the presentation of mathematics material will be very nice. And uh, even though if you can't install and maintain a server at your place, for free, uh, 
for a personal level use, you can use Moodle Cloud. This is only for 45 days, but whereas Genomia will allow you to have, uh, there is no time limit on Genomia, but there is one thing is uh, the, they allow uh, advertisements in a free account. So some random advertisements will come into it. And what I try to say is when you want to use Moodle, it's not a very difficult task. The, it is available for free. Uh, you go there, create an account and upload the students. I can help you with uh, some sample uh, sheets, how to upload student data, etc., and how to create course. It will be very simple to do that. Okay. One thing. And the next thing is, in Moodle, uh, Moodle is a kind of, uh, it, it contains uh, like huge features. But what I have tried so far is very small. And I have been using this from 2012. I have used attendance, I have used assignments, forum activity, forum discussions. I used workshop activity. And I'm going to explain a few of them, how it will look like. And assignments, so what they can upload PDF uh, or online text, or even if you are running some practical courses, they can upload course. They can upload other forms. That also can be customized, what kind of things. And you can actually annotate like this, the usual uh, mini Google Classroom and all, now it has all these facilities. And you can give comments. For these comments, the student can reply. And there are some feedbacks, the global feedbacks also you can give. And then uh, this is what about assignments. And you can grade them. The grades can be exported in uh, Excel sheet, etc., for future use. And then this workshop activity is a very important activity. I will say, I will take a few minutes to explain this. See, workshop activity is something, some assignment is submitted by students. Among the, assign, among the students, you distribute the assignments randomly to each other, and they will correct their own peers' assessment, uh, whatever they have submitted. So that way, they will write once, and uh, even you can say that how many things they have to review. You can just, uh, you can ask the student to review more than one also. Random assignment is possible. And once the random assignment is made, they will evaluate. And they will evaluate not just uh, the way they want, the way you want. So for example, as a teacher, you can view what are the aspects in a particular assignment. For example, if you are giving a proof, so what the statement is, what they have to write next, what is expected at each point, you can view four or five aspects and each aspect they can correct. And for each aspect, they can view marks and they can view comments. For example, if I zoom this here, you see this, the student has uh, given zero marks for this. But then he has uh, given uh, some reason for that also to the other student. This is the way students can correct other students. And this is an important feature in which uh, when they correct others, they will learn a lot. Uh, so that's an important uh, workshop activity. In fact, a similar thing I usually do uh, to gain the attention of the students, uh, something called one proof test I do. I'll go there to this today's uh, class, whatever I'm going to teach, uh, we uh, consist of one single proof. And if you have understood clearly and if you demonstrate that you understood, uh, the marks for that will be included in internal marks. And they'll be very keen to get the internal marks because it is general that at least uh, in many places, uh, students in mathematics department fail, whereas in other departments, they won't fail. Uh, the reason is they'll get low internals, etc. Okay, and uh, uh, this workshop activity helps them learn. And uh, in your uh, usual classroom, you can do this. You can just explain something and uh, ask them to listen to it, write an assignment, submit it, and then you just click one button. It will randomly assign assignments and you can ask them to evaluate that also. And then it will finally give marks for both. See, for example, this particular girl, Anjali, was assigned uh, two students, Priyadarshini and Devika. So she has given eight marks to Priyadarshini and seven marks to Devika Suresh. And uh, she has submitted this Archimedean property assignment. And she was given 10 marks by Siddiqui Mubashira. And Ritika Sharma has given eight marks to her. Now she can go and see what she has received. Chandru, Chandru yeah. I fear we have sort of time. Yeah, sorry. Uh, just uh, give me two minutes. OK, so yeah. This is, uh, important thing. Two two minutes. Minutes. Yes, sir. Please conclude in two minutes. Yeah. Uh, finally, you can actually uh, have a grading for both submissions as well as assessments. Okay. Now, this important thing in uh, generally assessments, we do it. For assessments, uh, we have to maintain a question bank. We have to create question banks. And the first time uh, I tried assessment is, uh, I have tried earlier, but I have not been very serious. Maybe I have done one or two questions. 
just to experiment. Then in the pandemic, I tried first time, and that was a difficult task to do it in Moodle. And in OFCM 2020, online foundation course in mathematics 2020, we did it actually. But myself, Sukumar, Vikram, and some other faculty joined us, and it was a big task because once you create the questions, you have to convert it into Moodle format, import it into Moodle, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That was a difficult thing. Now, the, from February 2021 onwards, this Moodle package is available for us. And with this package, we can create nice uh, latex styled questions and can be imported. And the delivery is also very good with Math Jacks on. And you see this, there are two ways. One is the teacher mode. Uh, this particular part, if you see this, this has the correct answer, etc. And if you want to give this to students, you can do this. There is a small uh, handout mode in which uh, the correct answers are always uh, not mentioned, etc. And whatever you do it in uh, PDF, the PDF can be used for checking answers, etc. etc. It will be very much convenient. And importing and exporting becomes very easy. It's like uh, uh, whatever work we did for three days in the YFS in 2020, uh, this year uh, for MTTS 2021, we can do, we can cut short the work by one third or something. That's the importance of this Moodle.sty. I, I recommend everyone to try this. And uh, when once the question bank is ready, and you can create Moodle quiz, uh, like you see, there are some tags here. You can add tags here. You can have create. You can have many categories also, and you can choose questions randomly from a particular category or more than one category, more than one tags involved, etc. And there are a variety of question types, starting from numeric answers, single, fill in the blanks, match the following, multiple objective type. In objective type, there is something like all or nothing, only Marshall power, only when every correct answer is chosen, single correct answers, so many things. And you can also enable safe exam browser if somebody wants to avoid copying or our opening, searching in other windows, etc. And grades, as usual, can be exported as Excel files if you want to submit it elsewhere in your university or institute. So this has plenty of options, Moodle quiz. And, uh, and then feedback and questionnaire is a very useful part. In fact, in our university, uh, when I installed the, in 2012 for the first time, there were not many people to use it, uh, except for, uh, for three or four faculty, nobody used it. And then around uh, this pandemic, almost everyone is using it. Uh, just uh, three or four years back, they want to conduct uh, teacher and course feedback online. So we use this anonymous mode for students. And our all our uh, course feedbacks are done through Moodle every year, every semester. And other handy tools which I want to say uh, about here is this overleaf, uh, especially for uh, collaborating with latex documents. When we want to prepare question banks, we use this overleaf. At a time, more than one people can work on the latex document. And uh, GeoGebra is a great visualization tool for classroom teaching. And many of you might have known about it. And uh, the importance of GeoGebra will be known only when you start using and even complex things, especially at the college level, BSc and MSc level. If you want to show certain things, you can show them very nicely. And in fact, SageMath is also another thing, but then uh, I'm just uh, sticking to GeoGebra. I think uh, yesterday there was a talk about SageMath. And YouTube, especially for video sharing, as I mentioned, if somebody missed a video, you can share it uh, here and they can see. It. And then this is a screenshot of uh, Overleaf. And this is what I'm mentioning about global category. You can have subcategory for uh, things. There are more than one tags, easy, etc. And then uh, this is the GeoGebra. This is a thing which I want to, I'm showing a specific uh, screenshot. This red color area is the area of the graph, uh, area of the area under the graph x square between minus one and one. You might have heard about uh, this is called Riemann integration, and you might have learned about Riemann steel J integration. What happens in Riemann steel J integration? We take some monotone function and do something. Right? But what actually it does, that is the blue area. And that is with respect to the function TQ. Don't ask me why it is monotone or not, but it's a function of bounded variation. In one interval piecewise, it is monotone. That's the meaning. So the picture can show the student what actually we are talking about. So that's why I said uh, GeoGebra is a great tool for visualization, especially certain things we can show them. Or in fact, we can just uh, show the effectiveness and they can learn on their own. That's the easiest thing that I want to say. And thank you. Uh, sorry if I have taken more time. Yeah, thank you, thank you. 
Yeah, so we do not have much time. So before, uh, uh, I, let me just quickly go. Uh, there was one question from Jayasri, Jayasri Subramaniam, Subramaniam to Sukumar. Uh, Sukumar, can you uh, unmute? Yeah, question is, could you please tell us something, uh, something about if there were students from real students, I mean, there are students from rural area and poor students in your online classes, and uh, did you have any difficulty reaching the same way you did with others? So can you respond to? Uh, yeah, so this, uh, at least uh, in the MTTS setup, uh, the, our usual concentration is on the uh, rural students. And uh, of course, there are a lot of uh, difficulty. For example, you might seen in the video that which I have shared, when they start open the audio and then answer, you can see the audio is actually cracking. But uh, that's where this uh, just nonverbal feedback, they were very active. And uh, with, just with mobile, I've, we have seen uh, students got a lot of benefit. And of course, there is a issue in terms of uh, internet. We also have faced certain things. Um, then, then in that case, we could actually help them to um, have internet pack. But some people, uh, internet, if it is not at all there in their uh, territory, and then they have, of course, we were unable to do anything. And uh, what possibly we could, we could do is that the sharing the transcript in the Moodle, then they were able to at least get the transcripts and then they will be able to do. So, yes, so there are some difficulties which we could uh, solve it, some which is beyond our scope, but whatever best that we could do, we have done it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, one query, it is from one of the panelists itself, Gita. So Gita asked uh, probably either Sukumar or uh, Chandru can answer. Is there a journal version of uh, journal version for uh, Mac? Yes, it is available. Journal Plus Plus is available. Journal Plus Plus is available for Mac. Yeah. Thank you. So one more query. I mean, uh, not exactly related to your presentation, but uh, please suggest some extension for collecting attendance on Google Meet platform. I mean, is there anyone who can help the, so Sashikant Pandey ask this. Do the panelists have idea? No. I don't have any idea. About okay, no. fine. Yeah. But, uh, uh, but the Moodle, the Moodle can take on its own. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, Example, I mean, without, you took, yeah, that is one possible. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, without having Moodle at hand, just yeah. I'm using uh, Google Meet, whether they receive someone from that is okay. I mean, there are, there are very nice comments on that chat. So I'll not go to the individuals. I think, I mean, always said to uh, all the participants, to everyone. And I thank, I thank uh, to one and all for the nice comments you had. Yeah. And I, I saw one raise then because I have probably yeah, one more minute I take. Uh, Asit Kumar Ghosh, he raised hand. Uh, can, do you have a query? Okay, I mean, maybe by, by mistake. Uh, because of uh, lack of time, probably will not be able to take up questions and more discussions. Uh, some some glimpses we have seen, yes, we have seen uh, experiences of a teacher which was spelled out by uh, Gita Venkatraman very nicely, yes, that is how it, we were all at a loss, as you see, that when pandemic started, we were, we were, we were at a loss, I mean, what to do, how to, how to talk to students, how to, uh, I mean, how to go to this interactive mode or I mean how to access the um, the classroom whether virtual or whether it is right so from that we have we have come a long way we have gained a lot of experience and some certain things we have shared today so I hope uh, regarding this MTTS MT, I mean uh, Dr. Sukumar he has presented certain things which are practiced and which are in fact the procedures evolved through the practice in MTTS. And uh, probably, I mean, he will agree with me 
that if some of the teachers, especially the college teachers, would like to actually experience, experience, experience how these things are actually materialized in MTTS programs, in fact, they may be invited. They may write to the MTTS, uh, whatever this thing, contact list are given, even, even to uh, Dr. Sukumar or to Dr. Chandru, or even to me, if, if you can write to us and probably we can, we can make, a, make arrangement so that, I mean, if, if you want to attend, uh, that may be facilitated if, uh, if required. So with this, I thank all uh, the speakers, all the participants and uh, the MTI for organizing this workshop and organizing this panel discussion and giving us uh, the opportunity to share our experiences. Thank you, everyone. Over to Harita. It's Harita around, or of course, I mean, Amber, Amber can uh, conclude. Hello, everyone. So, yeah. uh, first, uh, we have had a very eventful morning and we have learned so many techniques and okay, encountered many issues and most positively seen what people have done to work around those issues, uh, both at school and college level. So I thank uh, all the speakers and the two chairs uh, uh, for, for conducting this, these two sessions. Then we will uh, now have, you know, in the afternoon, we have the workshop uh, on, on this uh, math icon and the use of uh, mathematical manipulatives in teaching. So I look forward to seeing all of you then. And of course, do remember that in the evening, uh, there is the second keynote by uh, Ken Ono. All right, so. So thank you everybody and uh, we look forward to meeting you in the remaining sessions of the day. Yeah. Thank you all. Bye bye everyone. <laughs> bye.